Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I first want to join my colleagues at this diplomatic conference in thanking and congratulating the Kingdom of Morocco for putting on such an excellent diplomatic conference. I bring you greetings from Dr. Mark Maurer, the President of the National Federation of the Blind, the United States' largest and oldest organization of the blind. He would have liked to have been here himself to deliver the message of the Federation, but on June 30th, the Federation will have its annual convention where over 3,000 blind and visually impaired individuals will attend. So you can understand that Dr. Maurer is quite busy getting ready for our convention. My mission from Dr. Maurer was to come here and bring back a, successful, com success, a successfully completed treaty. That is my mission, but that decision will be up to you. I hope that I can go back to our national convention and tell our members that access to information will be improved, that the right to read for blind individuals will be expanded, or will I have to go back to the convention and tell my colleagues we failed, that the international community missed it's historic opportunity to do something that makes a difference. Sometimes it is easy when we talk about this treaty to get caught up in things that are extraneous and into theoretical matters. I don't live there. I have been blind since age 10 due to a childhood virus. My image of blindness at that time was portrayed to me by popular media. What was my image? What was being taught? Blind people were beggars. Blind people lived in poverty. Blind people relied on the charity of others. That's what I had seen. So you can understand that when I started to go blind, I was terrified because I thought that would be my life. Fortunately, that has not been the case. Because I was lucky, one of the very, very few who have been lucky, I got access to information. And because of that, I am a successful trial attorney, running my own law firm, running and raising my own family, owning my own house, None of this would have been possible, though, if I did not have access to information. So when you talk about this treaty, you're talking about real people. And what you do here makes a real difference. So what is our litmus test? Our litmus test is this. Are the provisions of the treaty something that will help us open up the vast stores of information in the world? Or are you creating new and different barriers, making it, making it even harder for us to access information? That is the litmus test. Now let me spell out two real quick examples of how this could get complicated and defeat everything that we've been trying to do. My good friend from the Motion Picture Association mentioned the joint statement. And I'm glad that he's providing a copy of it to this body, because I want people to read it. What that joint statement talks about is getting back to basics and making this a simple treaty. You will note that in that joint statement, there is no mention of the three-step test or fair use, and the National Federation has not commented on those doctrines because we don't want to get caught up in the overall global copyright battle. This treaty should neither advance nor contract the three-step test, neither advance nor contract the implementation of fair use. There are other battles where that can be debated, and this is not the appropriate venue for such things. Here's another 
uh, 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 issue I want to highlight for you, commercial availability. If published works were truly universally available commercially to those of us who are blind and print disabled, would we even be here? Of course not. Commercial availability is a very complex, nebulous concept that is nowhere near real. And therefore, it should not be included in this treaty either in a mandatory sense or in a, in a manner that will chill or limit the ability of authorized entities to provide information. And it is important that we keep that in mind because we know of the nations that currently have commercial availability. And we have talked to some authorized entities who specifically do not reproduce works that are even arguably available in a commercial sense. Marcus Lowe talked about books that arguably are commercially available, but not really usable by the blind. Let us not write language that chills authorized entities and discourages them from reproducing books in a way that is real and effective. So ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, Mr. President, distinguished delegates, are you going to send me home with a message of hope and the promise of a bright future? Or will I have to go home and report failure and spend many more years trying to achieve the aims of equal inclusion and equal participation by the blind and print disabled of the world? The answer to that question is now in your hands. Thank you.